Hi everyone, welcome back. This is going to be a brief-ish video, I say that, we all know where it's going, on my current pigmentation situation, how I got it, how I'm trying to get rid of it. Um, background on me and my skin and where mine is, I have, we had a holiday for two weeks and Easter, April break with the kids in Florida. During that period I was reapplying SPF 50 hourly on the kids as well as me. I just thought why on earth would you take better care of your children than yourself? So I was applying just as frequently as I was putting it on them. Um, and then we were back for a week and then I went back to the States for 10 days, which meant a long stint in sunny Los Angeles. So all good and all beautiful, not so good for the pigmentation. Um, Let's just set some, I don't want to get anyone's expectations up. This is how I'm treating my pigmentation. It doesn't mean it will work for you. And there are so many variables in skin, as you know. Um, the main one being, you know, if you have melasma that you've had for years and years and years, I am not going to sit here and say to you, there's a cream that will get rid of it. Let's just get that out of the way. However, if you have melasma stroke pigmentation that resurfaces I call it I think of my pigmentation as a pot that's just off the boil and when you go out into the sun it brings it to the boil and when you come out of the sun it comes down again and that's all it is and most of us have it and I think we focus way too much on it in society because it is what it is it's not a particularly horrific thing to have to deal with I know it's severe on some people I totally understand that and every skin is different I just think the beauty industry has been guilty of saying this will cure your melasma and this will fix your pigmentation when the odds are, especially if you've had it a long time, it won't. What does work? What works is a combination, depending on how severe it is, between lasering and good product. And when I say good product, I really mean key ingredients. Um, I will show you what I've been using. First of all, I thought I'll show you I will also link in down below into the vlog from LA where I have just come in from the sun and I show you my pigmentation and talk about it. I'll put that down below. So have a look at that so you can see how bad it is. I'm not sophisticated enough to split the screen and do like a before and after. I think we all know that. So my pigmentation, if I turn these lights down, oh, or the other way, right, you can see it better in the harsh office light. Beautiful. It's tulip shaped here. It comes over there. I have a spot here and like a patch there. And I know, see how much darker it is now, hang on. Oh, just to prove I'm not covering anything up. I am completely naked on the face. Oh, I bought out too many. Don't waste them. Let's turn these lights up a little bit. Okay. And. There we go. Alrighty. So I'm not wearing makeup. Oh, I do want the lights up a bit though. There's no need to make me look even more harsh. Do you know what I mean? No, come on. Oh, forget it. Right, here is what. Also, I just wanna say, it is sweltering today in the office and my aircon is broken. So all the lovely jumpers I normally film in are hanging up and they may have to stay there. It's a J. Crew lemon t-shirt. It's too much. Product wise, laser wise is a whole other deal and I have a video that's about to go up hopefully this week with Theresa Tami talking about that so you can look at that when that's up. Um, product wise, don't think that a really, a really expensive product that says whitening, that's my bugbear. Did we not see the problem with the term whitening? Um, brightening is okay. But whitening, I'm like, no. Choose wisely, don't believe the hype, and go after things through word of mouth that you know, people who've tested, people you trust. Um, if you walk into most department stores and say, I want something to help with my pigmentation, they're gonna sell you something that isn't strong enough. Sorry, they just are. So let's talk product. First of all, I will not spend money on a um, brightening cleanser. I'll use them especially if they're sent to me and they're nice cleansers, but I wouldn't ever think that a cleanser would fix my pigmentation. I'm sorry, and I'm always gonna be looking a lot because I wanna make sure you can sort of see that it's there, but I'll focus. Um, as if it's gonna go anywhere. It's been a long day. So cleansing wise, use your normal cleanser. 
don't go crazy. The only thing you can do to help yourself is to not cause any further damage. So stay, stay away from soap, stay away from foaming, make sure your pH level is low. Um, just think about it, you know, just choose wisely. Nice, nice creams, nice gels, but not foaming balms. Um, they're all fine. The next stage is where you start dealing with your pigmentation and that is acid toners. Now all acid toners will help you in one way or another, bar maybe salicylic. Um, lactic will give you a good resurfacing, um, glycolic can help. I've been using P50 pigmentation, well it's PIGM 400, it looks like this. If I come back it's very bright. There we go. Um, this is the newest in the stable of P50, exfoliating and brightening lotion for the face. Now you can see, I don't know if you're able to see, but it's up to here. It's not very good light, is it? Sorry. Um, and it's been fine for me. This contains niacinamide. Okay, you're just gonna have to bear with because the eyes. Um, glycerin niacinamide, lactic acid, sodium lactate, Oh, what, japonica, magnesium, mandelic acid, mandelic, tasty. Uh, phytic acid, citric acid, and that's not even, just two, two rows in. So it's, in the tradition of the P50s, it's loaded. Now, I, do I think that using an acid toner will help your pigmentation? Yes, I do, because you're leaving it on the skin. So this is stage one, this is what's helped me, but any acid toner is gonna do you a service, okay? Then we get on to the fun stuff. Now, this next stage is the main stage. Your serum stage is what is gonna help the most. Whether it is a retinoid at nighttime, differing in the morning, or a super strong vitamin C at nighttime. I have been doing all three and mixing and matching. Um, the best one I found in terms of, I know it's working and I, can, I feel like it sort of did that to it. And I do not say this lightly because I take it seriously, is uh, DCL Seascape High Potency Night Booster 30. It looks like that. Okay, that's the product. That's a motorbike outside. Um, and just an absolute word of disclosure. I just, you'll see if you watch the vlogs, I've just come back from a press trip with DCL. I accepted that press trip because I had been impressed with this product. The press trip did not come first. I've been using DCL products since January-ish. The reason I went was because I wanted to see their labs and check out to see if it was the real deal that I thought it was. And so far, I am very impressed. This is um, a nighttime vitamin C. It's 30% ascorbic acid. The reason it stays stable is threefold. The packaging is airtight, it's dark, and it is water-free. It's quite crystallized, it's anhydrous. I think it's anhydrous. I'll check the word, but it basically means it's a water-free formula. So let me just show you, oh, lemons. It's quite gritty, sorry, focus. It's quite gritty, so it looks like that. And as you use it, now that now feels like a scrub. You won't be able to see anything except a glow. But as you use it on your skin, especially if you are using it post-acid, which I do, um, you will feel, um, you feel it breaking down on the skin. And that's how I kind of knew it was kicking in. Now, it might be too strong for some of you. If you have average skin, that you're worried about the pigmentation, it would be my first port of call, and I'll tell you for why. Because vitamin C is one of the few products that I have found, and especially at that strength, that will help reduce the tyranase in the skin without bleaching the area around it. I don't know why I'm speaking as if I'm doing signing. Okay, um, essentially, I have been putting it all over my face and it, it is basically reducing the level of my sort of brown blotches without making the other area of my skin look bleached. And that is key with pigmentation. That's why I'm always wary about anything that says whitening. You have no business buying anything called whitening from eBay, Amazon, or Facebook. Please don't do it. Um, and I don't say that lightly either. I've had queries about it. So this vitamin C, where did I just put it? 
this vitamin C has worked brilliantly for me. Um, you also get, you know, it's a, a really good antioxidant, so you get the protection for that anyway, but it's in a lovely time release, water-free formula. It's 30%, it's crystallized almost, so when you pump it and you break it down, it activates. I am obsessed, I use it nearly every single night, and I think you'll be able to tell even just from my old vlogs, my pigmentation is going down. Other vitamin C's that are also good um, are Drunk Elephant. I like a bit of this, looks like that. Uh, Drunk Elephant C Firma Day Serum. This is slightly different. It is a watery, oily, I mean, it's oily, sorry, not water, but it's much runnier. Looks like that. Um, I find that one's actually better for daytime because you couldn't use the DCL during the day, it's too rough on the skin. You want to use that at night time where you can do a nice big sort of cleanse, put your serums on, um, something to hydrate afterwards and then go to bed. But the vitamin C from Drunk Elephant is a really good antioxidant for daytime. So if you want to use it as backup, that's the kind of thing I would go for. Um, I would also look at ones from um, Desiem, The Ordinary, go with what your budget allows, it is much better than just using a plain old hyaluronic acid serum. Which you wouldn't, but you see what I mean. Um, then other things for day and night. This is actually done, but I did get one last kick out of it this week. This is the Ketrol cream. This is prescription strength retinoid. Um, I don't know if I will get another prescription for this. I find it's, um, it's almost too much and unnecessary and the more research that I read coming out the more people and sort of chemists and trials and clinical trials are all leaning towards the fact that you can they're saying little and often is better than sort of just doing one big hit of a retinol every other night and there'll be more of that coming up on the blog but it is also another good one for pigmentation and I have used that up while I've been doing it. Not as much as I was using the vitamin C, but I have used it. And then I have also been using the Differin in, uh, just because it's nice to have something to use in the morning. If you could focus, that'd be fantastic, thanks. Um, you've seen Differin on previous videos. I use this, I tend to use this in the morning. Now I have played and layered things as I am wont to do, obviously. And I have done things like um, differing, very thin layer with DCL on top and then I wouldn't cap that with a retinoid then I'd go in with something hydrating to almost say sorry. So as far as actives go these are your active stage so you've got acids, vitamin C and retinoids. That's kind of your pigmentation hit squad if you like okay and obviously there'll be all the info down below on those and then the next stage is to care for it so when you're being quite aggressive with the skin you want to do something that's gonna just say okay we're being quite aggressive but let's all calm down um, and I have a few favorites for that as well um, main one for if I know I've gone too far and I think oh, okay calm down because I can feel like a bit of a tingle the vitamin C will tingle especially if you're not used to it the Zellens vitamin D is always the first port of call. That is almost like a band-aid in a bottle. I've talked about that before, no need to go into it, but that is fantastic if you have overdone anything on your skin. If you've overdone acids, if you've overdone retinols, if you've overdone scrubs, if you've overdone laser treatment, anything like that, that's what you want in your arsenal. And then moisturizer-wise, there are four. Two of them are by Dr. Jart, and it's the Ceramidin, and the Ceramidin gel. Now, I do have that. Oh, do you know the place is trashed? I do have that, but that's nearly empty. Where did, what was that? Don't even know. Um, but I find these are better for layering. Now, I'm not suggesting you use both of them at the same time. This is really runny and almost like a liquid lotion. And this is a really fun consistency, actually. Looks like... Now let's see if I can get this to work. Looks like that. Now it may not focus, it looks like a plain cream. Let me see if I can get any. It has, it's like an emulsion gel, but it has bits kind of, let's see if I can pat it down, you might see it has bits in it. They tend to break 
when you massage it in so you get a really lovely wet formula like that which is what you want you don't want anything I find if I'm using um, really strong serums retinoids differing vitamin C's that if I use anything too heavy on top I get like tiny little whiteheads because the skin's really active underneath and for me for my skin it's too much what my skin prefers is cleanse acid hardcore serum eyes obviously over there hardcore serum and then a couple of layers of moisture if that makes sense um, two more uh, they are Darfan now this is if I've overdone it <laughs> it's night time I want something lovely and cushiony and the, I want the aroma once I know my skin is sort of being taken care of underneath this is Darfan's eight flower nectar oil cream now if this focuses it'll be a miracle but I will I could be sexy and try and do some cutaways couldn't I um, that is just a really lovely it's quite thick I'll show you it's quite thick but it doesn't leave residue it's not greasy and it is one of the best smelling creams on earth I know that's irrelevant I know there are those of you who say I don't want any essential oils that's fine stick with DJ stick with the Dr. Jart perfectly adequate this is just for those of us who, who don't have a problem with essential oils and who love a bit of uh, that smell if I get into bed wearing that I always get a mm, you smell nice and then this one this is Josh Rosebrook vital balm cream if you have not had the pleasure of getting this into your olfactory system I highly suggest you try and remedy that as soon as possible it looks like this it's his latest edition come on focus for Josh there we go it is blue I don't know if you can see I'll see if it shows blue on my hand it's going to show white but it's blue this is slightly um, it's probably as rich as the Darfan and again now the scent this is equally as soothing and calming and hydrating and all of that but here's the kicker it also contains blue tansy which though now I know that some of you have gone oh hello May Lindstrom this is like blue cocoon in a moisturizer people just putting that out there oh god my hands smell so good now okay back to the pigmentation I know it's not about smells but they are really good hydrators so cleanse doesn't matter just keep it as a healthy pH acid embrace the acids mix them up if you can put all of if you're on a budget put all of your money into the serum into the treatment stage and just get cheapest chips moisturizer from the chemist and a nice cleansing milk a French cleansing milk or something here or a pixie double cleanse um, here but put your money into the middle now of course after you're doing all that your final stage will always 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 be SPF when you are treating um, pigmentation now yes you should wear SPF anyway da, 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 but as you are I think the mentality especially of us English birds is when we're out of the Sun and we're not on holiday a lot of us forget about it I have been very much in the boat of wearing it in recent years just because my pigmentation has come to the surface also you know pigmentation remember is not is not something new it's something that's been there for probably 10 years and every time you go in the Sun it triggers and it comes up so think of that pot being on the boil anything you can do to keep the pot from boiling keep yourself out of the sun, wear SPF, try and stay cool there's not much you can do if you need to take the pill and you're pregnant I mean let's face it hormones are going to be hormones but always wear an SPF this is the one I was wearing and I think it did I got colour you're always going to get colour if you're in the sun it's what's going to happen if you're not going to burn but you will get colour especially if you are olive skin or Fitzpatrick scale sort of three four five six well, six obviously I'm not a moron but if you're in that middle group like olive skin like my tone and darker you will always get color nothing is gonna stop you getting any color but the thank you farmer SPF 50 was really lovely really light to use let me show you it looks I'll show you how nice it blends in as well so it's an SPF 50 and that's it no sort of white ashiness 
there we go. So I will answer as many questions as I can down below. Bear in mind, like I said, the key things to remember is that it's completely individual. This works for me. My pigmentation is definitely going down. When I'm on holiday in the summer, it, the pot will boil again, and then I'll take it down again. If you have heavy, long-term pigmentation, I would definitely consider doing this, but with a mixture of lasers. Always go to a good, qualified laser expert, and I will put links to some bodies down below that can help you do that as well. There's gonna be a lot of information down below. Um, I hope that is in some way helpful. Is it okay if I wear makeup for my next video?